Well, hello everybody. Uh, it's my pleasure again to say hello to you, to welcome you to the number six of Symposium Tinkers TV. And uh, well, it's my pleasure to present again all the six brands of Tinkers. You know them very well. Tinkers, Experts, Sopap, Nimark, Helu, and uh, of course APM. But today we have a special guest, Pepper and Fuchs, our long-term partner, will present some of his very interesting new products. And well, we are very excited today to present you specifically for United States in English version now um, some of our latest developments uh, from all those brands and I would like to pass to Christian and Christian to have the latest news thank you welcome from me to the sixth symp symposium TV and now we are present the AGVs the automated guided vehicles machen Sie den Fahrweg frei.
safety features of the AGV. Is this AGV safe to operate in an environment where workers are present? Yes, it's safe. Uh, we use two diagonal laser scanners for the personal safety and we have two 3D cameras for the machine safety. Okay. How does the navigation system work? Is there any additional equipment needed? No, we um, use the contour data of the environment for the navigation. Um, this is a free navigation technology and we use uh, simultan localization and mapping um, technology. Okay. Um, in the video, we saw a charging connector. How do these AGVs charge? Um, the AGV charge fully automated and the charging time is 0 0.8 hours and the operating time 8 hours. Okay. In this case, we see a rack made of the TOS one screw system with uh, car doors inside. What are typical um, applications for these AGVs? What are typical loads? Uh, we can transport racks of the automotive industry with different automotive parts inside from the storage directly to the line. And we have a TOS system. A TOS system is a very modular system. When um, the rack has um, damaged, we can replace one TOS profile uh, very fast. Okay. Here we see how the AGV has uh, connected to a station where the robot can now pick out one of the car doors. Products for the module transportation. It's not only a product, it's furthermore a solution for hmm? our international yeah. customers. It can be locally yeah. produced nice. and delivered. And this is a big advantage for our markets there. The seventh axis comes uh, with the combined advantage of compactness, but also very tough and very precise. And it's not only used for the applications such as welding, as you can see here with NEMAC, cooperation with us. It brings the first fruits already, as the seventh axis is showing, but also for handling um, activities and also, for instance, for painting and other applications. We are open for further developments. Here we see the Type 2, as I said, for the company NEMAC. It's a sister company and brings already the first fruits of, yeah, to cooperation, we get stronger, and therefore we have the seventh axis for the type number two. Two stands for two tons payload for the for the carrier, or two tons robot altogether. This one, as a payload, is robot of 270 kilos and a total load of up to two tons. Also, the robot behind me can be used for that. But you also have the size number one for one ton, and size number three for three tons total payload. If you use this as a normal linear carrier, not as a robot carrier, you can double the weight with a factor of two. And as I said, we combine toughness with also precision. Precision of 0 0.02 of a millimeter is way precise. And uh, through the cleverness of our construction, we can apply here several custom-made features and advantages. Not only that it's compact, of course, less than 1.5 meter width cable tray, but, and 440 millimeters with height. We also get here, for instance, a referencing device with referencing peg and, um, and also a hole to in ensure that also we see the, um, the vernier with the, with the zero position to ensure the zero position, even if we do any kind of maintenance work or repairs or change of, of parts. What else we have here? We also have the, the linear rail. It's also coated for aggressive environments, which is a great asset. What else can we also add? We also have here the, um, the lubrication system is all fully automated for the pinion and rack, but also we can also add the same uh, functionality to the camp followers, which are also used in our turntables, by the way. We have a lot of, lot of many years of experience and a lot of good feedback from our customers, tough and precise, and it can also be lubricated with automated dispenser. And also an, an increase of height can be guaranteed using spacers or rings. And of course, if the customer de desires, can also get the entire elevation of the structure for a desired height. We can do seven axes, that's true, but you can do more than that. And therefore, we also have developed the eighth axis. What is the eighth axis? You can see in our video here, we add our EDH turntable or other turntable from our series, and we can turn carriers and robots or tools or any kind of devices the customer may want to. And what is the goal? We can reach way more complicated areas, 
reduce costs by decreasing the, size, the amount of robots in the plant and give us this flexibility you want to, you want to give in a modern factory. This is only an example of 90 degrees, but other shapes like U-shape or adding more stations or other kind of output angles are also possible. This is only an, ex an example, an impulse for our market, where you see a potential here for the modern plants and modern factories. And please contact us on our website. We can discuss with you the planning of your uh, factory and of your project. And uh, of course, as you can see here, our seventh axis combines itself um, with AGVs. And therefore, I pass the word to our colleague, Mr. Christian Dreyer. We have halt, we have halt überall nur beginners. Uh. We use sensors um, like the safety data matrix code reader from our partner Peplon Fuchs. SIL 3 PLE absolute positioning with just one sensor. Safe positioning and navigation with safe PXV and safe PGV. The technology is based on the tried and tested combination of a 2D read head and data matrix code tape. Special multicolor codes are used with bicolor lighting to create a unique safety solution. Each code contains safety information, which is first made visible by the red and blue LEDs and then read by the camera. Plausibility tested directly in the sensor, the safe X position is transferred to the safety PLC. The data can then be processed in the PLC without additional plausibility checks. This allows the system to achieve SIL 3 PLE rating with just one sensor. Optimized for the navigation of automated guided vehicles, Safe PGV goes beyond positioning. In addition to the safe X position, the sensor also provides all necessary values for reliable vehicle control. In the automotive industry, it helps maintain a minimum distance between AGVs and ensures the safety of personnel at all times. In addition to the safe data, users can easily access the angle and Y position. This enables vehicle control and protects personnel and equipment in line with SIL 3 PLE using just one sensor. The large reading window ensures interference-free positioning, even on damaged code tape or with gaps of up to 75 millimeters. This is what makes both systems the safest and most reliable positioning solutions in the world. Safe PXV for safe linear absolute positioning. Safe PGV for safe navigation of automated guided vehicles. Unique SIL 3 PLE rated technology with just one sensor. The companies Tunkas and Pepin and Fuchs have been working successfully together in many projects for many years. And I can speak for the whole Pepin and Fuchs group. We are very proud to be part of the Tunkers family. The results are tailor-made solutions which enrich our particular relationship or partnership. 
So as you could see in the short animation in the beginning, we present a safe positioning system for at least positioning and identification purposes used in AGVs by using a safe data metrics stripe. Today, we want to present you a new feature, which is called checker function, and therefore, I want to hand over to my good colleague, Thorsten Schülein. Thorsten, that's your turn. Thanks a lot, Tobias. Welcome. Hi there. Yeah, today, <coughs> we have the chance to uh, demonstrate or to show you our new function. Uh, the company Tunkas use our safe PGV you see it in the movie uh, since a couple of years and different devices. It means the HVs, the uh, forklifts and so on. And we, did, we developed this uh, new function into both systems. That means the safe PXV and also the safe PGV system. So um, uh, Tunkas, uh, the company Tunkas um, has developed an own uh, yeah, exchangeable code bar system and we use it to demonstrate it. We prepared it a little bit, uh, and here you see some areas yeah, with destroyed codes, or with heavily destroyed codes, uh, with slightly destroyed codes, yeah, in dirt area, and here an area with uh, good conditions. And now we present the new, uh, the new function. Thank you. Um, what, what does it mean, the new uh, function? We added two uh, new parameters. One of them is a quality value. You see it here in, in this direction. And the other one is the uh, number of readed codes. So um, the values are given as a school, um, at more a German-based school uh, system from one to six. One means that the, um, the grade um, or the error is uh, in, in a very good condition. And six means that the grade is in a very bad condition. Furthermore, you uh, get, get uh, a grade seven. Seven means the sensor can't read any codes. So both parameters, we send it over ProfiSelf uh, into a PLC. Uh, we added four bytes into a new uh, GSTML file, and you can handle these um, four bytes yeah, as you want. So um, the benefit is that uh, both parameters give you more data, and you can uh, handle it um, yeah, you can perform more efficient uh, predictive maintenance. So this is, in our opinion, a, a big benefit for our company Tunkers and also for all our uh, other customers. Thank you, Thorsten. So our partnership, I think just to, to give you an imagine, so the, part, the idea for the, for the latest version of, of a sensor which is used in the clamping area of Tunkers, uh, this is like that one, and I would like to hand it over to Christian. Thank you. Yeah, since uh, beginning to use this sensor, we have come a long way. From using electronic sensors, we are now going towards uh, going full electric with the electric clamps. For the electric clamps, we are always working on developing new control uh, solutions and today we want to present to you our new newest solution which is the TS TMI 8 control cabinet. We have here a little uh, setup which consists of the electric clamp, our standard control solutions which are the TMI 8 and the TVM 8 for reference, then the new control um, box and um, just to, for reference, a customer uh, control unit. This, with this new control unit, um, we can do all functions that these two units can do. So this has the function to control the uh, electric clamps, but also the power uh, supply built in. First of all, I want to show you the new EK25.3 clamp. The new feature here is the M12L coded connector. It is for the higher current consumption of the electric DC motor. And also, you cannot misconnect the wires anymore because this T12 sensor block has an M12A coded connector. It is for the positions open and close for the sensors. Now I want to show you the connectors on our TTMI8. Here we have 
eight M12L coded connectors and eight M12A coded connectors to connect eight EK clamps, electric clamps. Then we have also the Profinet in and out, so you can work via daisy chain. Then we have 24 volts DC control voltage, which you can also go to the next TTM IA with. Then we have also, last but not least, the 230 volts AC connector for the power supply of our TTM I8. And now I want to show you the inside of the control cabinet. First of all, we have two power supply units, 24 volts DC and 20 amps. They are equal to our TVM8. Then we have the eight channel fuse box. It is for the safety of the wires of the EK clamps. Then we have the ET200SP for the decentral periphery. This communicates with your customer PLC. Here we have two safety EA cards and they are for the safety of the EK clamps. In case of emergency shutdown, they shut down the uh, power relays and then the power supply of the eight AK clamps gets immediately shut down for a safe. At, at last, we have the eight TSM1 modules. They are designed and developed by Tinkers, especially for the use of the EK clamps, the electric clamps. They work via digital IOs and communicate with the decentral periphery. Thanks for the attention. We now want to demonstrate how you can diagnose failures of an electric clamp with this new technology. For here, you can see the graphical user interface, where you can see eight different clamps in the bottom. This is, of course, all in German now, but every language is possible. If I now go to clamp number one, I can start it and we can hear and we can see how the clamp is moving. When we now want to demonstrate a failure, my colleague will just simply disconnect a wire. And we see, OK, this turned red. We now have a failure. And we can actually see what the failure is. It states open position not reached. If we now reattach the wire, and reset this unit, I can start the clamp. Oh. I can start the clamp back up again. Um, this clamp is the e EK25.3. A similar clamp, the e EK25.2, um, we use in our AGVs. For this, the EK25.2 has attached the control unit, and the AGV can control the clamp via CAN bus. The, the clamp is used, in our is used in our AGVs, as you can see here in the lifting tables. Instead of an arm, there's a hook connected to the clamp, which can safely uh, uh, fasten the load into position, so if there's an emergency stop, the load cannot fall off the AGV. And with this, I will hand over to Christian with the AGVs. Here you see the Tunker Stacker. The Tunker Stacker is one of the most modern AGVs from Tunkers. It's a counterbalance forklift AGV. We have sensors in the forks for detecting the white position of the pallet. The AGV is equipped with um, free navigation technology. It's based on a simultan localization and mapping technology. Um, so it means we um, detect the contour data of the environment and use it for the navigation. Um, in the free navigation, we have a position of plus minus five millimeters and with a fine positioning uh, based on a datamatics code reader from Peplon Fox we have a position of plus minus three millimeters. We have laser scanners for the security of the AGV. We have um, digital LEDs uh, to visualize the status of the AGV or movements. 
Um, the AGV is mean time to repair optimized. We can open this hood and can change or replace every electronic component like the PLC, the EPC or the sound model. Behind this cabinet you see the hydraulic pump and the battery. The battery has a capacity of 6.8 ampere hours. And now we are switching to the art. <laughs> So, here we have the Volkswagen Beetle in it. Unternehmen Kunst, das ist die Kunst bei Tunkers. Und die gibt es seit 2013. Das sind Ausstellungen. Well, corporate art, this is art at Tunkers. And it has existed since 2013. We organize exhibitions at the Tunkers company for a limited period with works of art from regional artists, that is, from Düsseldorf and the surroundings, and of course also from Ratingen. And the special feature is that this is not a museum-like environment or a gallery-like environment, but the works of art are in our factory. And this is very exciting for the artists, for our employees, but also for our guests who visit us. This is a work of art by Birgit Jensen titled Blue Lake and we purchased this specifically for this room because the Blue Lake is in Ratingen where the Tunkers company was founded and I would like to present some more works of art to you and take you with me to a guided tour. This is a work of art by the artist Paul Speer and this is a piece of work which a, provides some seating. It can be a meeting place. At the same time, it has a roof and a shelter. This is why it's called shelter. And it lights up in the sunlight. And it's very extraordinary that in a production hall, we have works of art. How did you like this? Oh, I like this very much. And well, um, it, it's also a subject for discussions and the works of art. I mean, these are not small paintings put up here, but for 16 people, we had such a huge rowing boat. And this is very impressive. And no matter to which company you go, this is really a special feature and an eye catcher. And this is a work of art which we kept here from the last exhibition. This is by Birgit Hübner. And on the right hand side, we can see two works of art by Rainer Barfuss. And from this artist, we have many works of art on permanent load. Loan. He made them available to us and we can play around with these paintings. And sometimes these and paintings change the location. And Tunkas is a technology company and art provides a very big contrast to engineering and technology. It can expand our perspective and, well, it may also help us develop new ideas. In the clamping technology, we see an increased demand for compensation clamps. So today we here have two different types of compensation clamps. Okay, on the one side we see the APH40. APH comes from the word alpha. This features a alpha curve mechanic. So this clamp actually has a full clamping force um, plus minus two degrees around the nominal zero position. On the other side you see a newer version, the UP40, the parallel uh, clamp. This clamp has a rotational movement and then the clamp arm will move down in a parallel uh, motion. I will now demonstrate how these two types of clamps can compensate for let's say a tolerance and thickness of the sheet metal. I have here a four millimeter piece that I can clamp with the APH clamp and now a one millimeter as you can see, the clamp arm actually moves a little bit down. It's not at a 90 degree angle anymore. With the UP clamp, the parallel clamp, 
I can also clamp both pieces, a four millimeter piece and a one millimeter piece also. In this case, you can see how the clamp arm moves down in a linear motion parallel to the clamping point. With these two clamps in the 40 um, series, we can compensate up to three millimeters for wear, uh, for misalignment in parts, or if different parts are produced in the same line. Hello, and a warm welcome also from my side. Uh, at the last symposium, we presented you our NTC Z gun, which you can see behind me. Today, I will present you our NTC X gun. It's the newest version. And so, the complete series of this NTC gun is now complete, and the worldwide distribution and also the production in, the, in our important export uh, country, China, is started. Also, the local, um, the local production in the USA and also in other countries is being prepared. This gun has the typical characteristics, as you can see also on the C welding gun. It is very slim, very compact, and very weight-saving design. And it is also very flexible. You can attach the robot to the gun on the side plates. The side plates have the function that the side plates will protect all other components of this gun in the inner side of the gun body. So you can adjust and attach the gun to the robot without any console on different on servers positions. Um, this is um, so was it? it's also very flexible, uh, the gun. Here you can see the motor, the drive motor. Here we can also, or we are able to adjust or to build in some different kinds, some different fabricates of this uh, drive. And also the heart of each welding gun is the transformer, the medium frequency transformer. Um, here we prefer our own product from the NEMA company, but it is also possible to uh, integrate some different brands, some local brands from other suppliers. So you can see this gun is also very flexible for the export for other countries. And yeah, that's the gun. Um, this, gun this gun is also very customer friendly because in the beginning of a project, we want to shorten the times, the lead times, and we want also to reduce the resulting costs of the gun in the, in the project beginning. So for that is, yeah, therefore we create for the NTC gun, but also uh, in the future for our multi-frame gun, we created um, a well-constructed uh, gun major catalog with this catalog, each customer is yeah, able to configure the guns by their own. So it's very easy for them. And the catalog, they will get uh, via uh, download after a short brief and uh, a short brief registration process by our company. And in the beginning, in the project beginning, it will save uh, the, some times, some valuable times. We are standing here next to our newest electrical swivel unit, the EGS 500. It consists of an electric servo motor in the back, a gearbox for adjusting the RPMs. In this area, we have a second brake unit installed. This brake unit holds the arm in a constant position if the motor or the gearbox are removed. In the top, we have the actual global drive, which is then connected to the drive shaft, which connects to our standard arms. With this electric setup, we can uh, generate uh, a swivel torque of up to 500 Newton meters. This is similar to what our uh, pneumatic uh, 
swivel units of the 160 size can achieve. But this unit is a lot smaller and also more compact and lighter. We can now see how the swivel unit moves. We see a very smooth movement and we see how, how it accelerates and decelerates when it comes to a stop. There's no jerk, there's no additional forces uh, put into the connecting pieces. Um, it is now running at, at 30 degrees per second, but we can increase the speed up to 60 degrees per second. And then it's even faster than our pneumatic series. With this setup, together with the control unit, we can reach a performance level D, which is necessary for many applications. To reach the performance level D, we use the S210 from Siemens, the frequency converter. In combination with this frequency converter and five safety functions, we reach performance level D. The first safety function is the SS1. It's a safe stop one. It means in case of emergency shutdown, the motor regulates his speed to zero. And once, once it reaches speed zero, the STO starts working, the safe torque off. That means we have no more current flow to the motor. To hold the weight in any possible position, in a safe position, we have the next two safety functions. It's the SBC, the safe brake control. That means these both brakes, the internal motor brake and the external brake, are controlled via a safety PLC. In case of no current flow to the motor, the brakes closes and it's possible to hold the weight in any possible position. To ensure completely safety, we have the next two safety functions. It's the SBT, the safe brake test. This means that one brake closes and the other one opens and this, the closed brake is, uh, is um, tested with a specified test torque. That means the safety encoder of the motor looks if the axis starts moving. If not, then the axis is free and enabled and you can start with the next automatic cycle. To visualize this, we have programmed a safety brake test for both brakes. I will demonstrate it now and start it. Now you can also hear the internal brake closes, the external brake opens, the internal brake is tested with the test torque, then when everything is okay, the internal brake opens and the external brake closes and we test it also with the test torque. Uh, in case of a good test, then the access is enabled and it can work again. Hello. Um, as always, we are trying to do a look over the fence, as you know. This morning, we made a chat with our colleagues over in China. Today, we have a, a more prominent uh, partner to talk to, uh, Mr. Mike LaRose, um, who is the president of KUKA uh, North America, um, who is joining us in. Uh, hello, Mike. How are you? Good. Good. Good morning. Good afternoon. Over there. Yeah, uh, we understand that uh, North America was hit hard by uh, COVID-19 and uh, uh, everything around the coronavirus. Uh, so what's the situation go uh, looking like right now? Well, it's uh, amazing uh, the comeback. Uh, it actually, it was a year ago this week that shut the company down. Uh, oh, a lot of background. To your side. Um, uh, so it was a year ago, we had a, a, a shutdown of our business, and uh, in, in, in September, uh, things started to turn around. And right now, a year later, we're really busy. Um, the economy's picked up considerably. The vaccines are rolling out very quickly. We have a lot of um, uh, people that have had the vaccine. They're doing about a million people a day uh, across the country. And uh, next week, I just tell them, Christian, they're lower in the age, uh, 50 and over, for people that are, are uh, that want the vaccine can can get it. So things are definitely looking better. 
Okay, that sounds okay. Uh, great for you. Um, so, but uh, uh, there is a lot of stimulus in the market, I understand. No, uh, electrical vehicles are getting more and more important. We heard from China that electrical vehicle companies are popping up on every, uh, on every uh, road crossing, more or less. Um, how is the situation over in, in, in the U.S., and, and how does that affect your business right now? Well, right now, GM's made a huge commitment to electric vehicles, which is... Uh, uh, an emphasis for our, our business. They currently have five uh, vehicle platforms they're converting over to electric uh, and, you know, as a partner of GM with a, with a contract, uh, we we're very busy with GM. The big, the, the big talks, the trucks, GM's going to come out with an electric truck, ele electric SUV later this year. We've already shipped the tuning to their assembly plants. GM also made a big investment in batteries. They're one of the few companies that are actually going to make their own battery and battery packs. They're not going to buy them. Um, so they're building a plan to actually do that. Uh, Ford has the Mach-E, which is getting, you know, the, the electric Mustang, which has been getting great press. Uh, we did some work for that. And Ford's looking at converting the F-150 um, uh, uh, over. There'll still be both trucks available, both electric and, and uh, ICE, internal combustion engine, uh, in the future. But GM is committed by 2030, they will not offer internal combustion engines anymore. So the world is changing very fast. And uh, are the customers uh, moving with it? Are the customers happy with, especially on the truck side, uh, to go from gas to electric engines? Well, uh, you know, they're, they're not uh, out in the market yet, but they all have, uh, you know, with, with Rivian, GM, they all have a lot of people that put deposits down. But, you know, you got to get your deposit back. So we'll see when the vehicles become available if people really, really uh, uh, take ownership of them. As you know, they're not, they're not cheap um, uh, compared to internal combustion engine. We do have some stimulus from our government. Um, and GM has just lowered the price of their car, electric cars um, considerably. That puts them in a range of, of ICE engines. So I think a lot of it will come down to cost and, and uh, total cost of ownership. So we'll see. Ah, okay. So, uh, yeah, we have seen innovation in the market. Uh, I know your uh, KUKA United States, uh, KUKA North America, is always going for innovation, uh, like we as well. What is your next uh, uh, predicted process move that's going to happen in our industry that's, uh, that's given us a boost, probably, on knowledge, on uh, technology? Uh, emphasis now for what we do is flexibility. Um, the skateboard which is the the basically the, the base of the electric vehicle uh they want to be able to put multiple platforms on for instance the hummer truck platform is also going to have an suv um so flexibility will be the key to the systems we build going forward and there's a couple ways of doing that but uh, the underbody which houses the battery uh, are dr dramatically changed as you know because there's no engine transmission anymore they have these what they call ED units, uh, electric drive units that go in the front. And in some cases, with trucks, they go in the front and rear. So the total packaging is different, which means we've got to come up with an underbody and have come up with underbody concepts to support that as well. So flexibility is going to be the key. Um, and, uh, you know, we got to be able to adjust to the bottom. Some of these platforms were launching our 20 jobs an hour, uh, but they want to be able to scale them up to 50 jobs an hour, for instance. So we got to be very flexible. I guess that's a good word going forward. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and the and flexibility, uh, what does that mean to the layout of the lines? Is it, is it, are we going to experience static lines in the future or is everything moving like we are showing today here with our AGVs and stuff? Well, yeah, that's a good point. Um, as you know, when you do flexibility, good news for Tonkers is it requires more conveyors to present the different body sides, for instance, right? We're looking at three or four different lanes for body sides. We also have a lot of AGV, mostly in the material handling area. There's always been a big emphasis, even before COVID, to eliminate fork trucks because of the, the cost, the danger, um, the safety. Um, so there's a lot more processes with AGVs, uh, primarily hand, handling material. Uh, some of our uh, customers, mostly the German customers, Daimler, for instance, they are using AGVs in the process, going through uh, taking the parts to uh, different stations for uh, 
uh, respot, for instance, and for uh, geo. The, the problem with that is, is it's a slow process. Most of my customers are 60, 70 jobs an hour, and AGVs don't make a, a, a lot of cost. You know, they're not cost effective uh, to do that. But some of the lower volume, uh, they're using AGVs for the process flexibility. But again, we, we, we bought a company called uh, More Tech a couple of years ago that made a, I call it an AGC because it's, it's mostly a part hauler. And uh, we can't we can't scale them up fast enough to support the material handling side of the business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know a company that you can come to uh, if you need something like uh, 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 like that style of product. You know. Um, so we are looking forward to uh, and, and being curious. You now, what are the requirements in the American market will be for the future? Because I I believe uh, uh, there are of course products that you potentially can use. So uh, yeah, thank you for now, Mike. Uh, it was a pleasure to talk to you, and uh, I wish you all the best uh, to your health and everybody in the family. Um, and uh, uh, see you next time. Thank you for help. To everyone over there, um, obviously we've got a great relationship with Tunkers. Um, there's a lot of conveyor business coming up uh, in the future, as well as the clamp business. Uh, I, I see all the plants will be adapting to electric vehicles. Uh, uh, you know, GM's already going forward, so that means Ford and the other companies will follow. So I think the next uh, uh, five years in, in our industry should be very good. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Thank fantastic. you very much, Mike. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. <clears throat> Yeah, um, uh, so uh, thanks to uh, Mike, we have the latest information uh, from the North American market. North America is a good uh, uh, point for uh, coming to the, next, uh, uh, to the next product that we are introducing here. That is a little bit from the past. Um, everybody knows Beetle uh, over in the United States. I think it has been as iconic as here. It was built in Mexico and we were able to acquire uh, Uh, a Beetle from uh, 2003, Ultima Edition. Thank you. So, here we have the Volkswagen Beetle in its Ultima Edition edition. The Beetle was a unique style kind of automobile uh, for the longest of its time, uh, from the 1930s to the 1980s when it was built in Europe. And then finally it was built in Mexico um, with the last model year in 2003. And we have been lucky enough to acquire one of those models in 2003. It took us some time to get it over to Germany and then we ran this car as the mailman's car. So whenever we had to drop some mail or whatever, it would have been driven. Of course, it has its iconic look It has in the Ultima Edition uh, the things, a lot of things that were stylish in the early 2000s. Um, but what it also had, it had working gears, surprise, surprise, with a synchronized gearbox, and of course other features that were not in the first edition. In the first edition, was still started with cranks, and uh, of course. There was no servo uh, steering wheel available for that. But, however, it was always a great car to drive. It was reliable. Everybody loved it. And uh, apart from the fact that during winter time, you got mostly cold feet because the heating was not working. Dynamic turns around the corners were definitely not the field. And the brakes were just so and so. But at the end of the day, whatever happened, Volkswagen Beetle mostly brought you to your destination. And it was so cuddly looking for everybody. We have created a 3D model configurator so you have fast and easy access to our 3D models of our underbody clamps. You can change the hook position the pin shape, custom parts, and the sheet metal. In this case, I will configure an example. Pin shape form A, a pin diameter of 25.1, a support height of 12 millimeters. Under type of sheet metal, you can change between width color or a flat piece. After all parameters are entered, 
you can create your own 3D model by clicking on Step. The configurator creates 3D files in the Step format so they can be opened with any 3D software. All of our models are created with a small piece of sheet metal so you can check if this is actually comparable to your application. If you require a 3D model that is outside of our standard, please contact us. Thank you. Yeah, you can find the configurator on our homepage. We would be happy if you try it out and let us know what you think. This marks the end of today's show. We hope you liked it. Um, for this year, we have two more shows planned, and we hope you will join us again. Thank you for your attention. Um, then from my side, um, thanks for joining the show, and goodbye, and take care.